welcome back to the channel guys hope everyone's doing well it's been a while since i've made a video about meshtastic and laura messaging so i thought i'd fill you in with what i've been up to lately now as of late it's been sort of no secret that meshtastic doesn't really work as a messaging system um it's, it's the truth <laughs> i'm sorry but it doesn't actually work um in the uk we've seen so many kind of nodes appear in a very very short space of time and due to the way meshtastic works it's it's routing algorithm which it's basically like a kind of flood-based packet system. It just means that the messaging system, when you get large amounts of nodes in an area, it just doesn't work. And we've seen lots of people kind of go away from um, you know this because because it just doesn't. It's just not working. You're sending messages, no one's coming back, and it kind of falls flat. Um, in that way. But the thing it does actually work really well as, and I've said this from the beginning, is a beaconing system. So it's very, very good for that. The beaconing side of Meshtastic works fantastic. You know, you see your, your node list um, and that fills up over time and you can see all of the potential contacts you could make in that area. That's a really cool system um, and I really, really like that part of Meshtastic. But yeah, the messaging side's just not really kind of working at the moment. Now, the thing that actually really inspired me to sort of get into Meshtastic in the first place was obviously it's a radio-based kind of thing, so I'm, I'm interested in radio communication, so that is the main reason. But also because it uses LoRa, and LoRa long range, the, the technology that basically allows you to send data over very, very long range um, is something that I've always been really, really interested in, and that's what kind of gravitated me towards Meshtastic. And it's been so cool to see other people share my passion of sending messages or short, you know, data over the air, um, you know, in the hope that someone might kind of decode and receive it. Like that, that to me is, I've made loads of videos on this over the course of the, the life of my channel, um, from packet radio to kind of, you know, DMR and all, the, all that sort of stuff. But the, um, the lower thing has really kind of captured the imagination of a lot of people. And yeah, it's been really, really cool to see. Lots of friends have been made. My Discord's been buzzing with activity. Um, you know, people trying out new antennas, going out to sort of, you know, hilltops at the weekend, trying to make contacts. So I think this really cool genre of a hobby, if you like, um, is, is actually, has actually got some legs and I think it could go forward. But the whole Meshtastic thing has gone a little bit flat now. So today I want to introduce to you something that I've been working on in the background that will hopefully maybe, I don't know, inspire a, a new dimension to this, this cool hobby that we've kind of got involved with. So I'm calling this LRMS, Long Range Messaging System. Now, look, this, this isn't meant to be a Meshtastic replacement or anything like that. And the name is just a simple thing that I just thought of while I was at the, on the bog. But the main thing about this, it just goes back to basics. It allows you to just send text over the air hopefully someone else will receive it and send messages and text back. So a basic LRMS system comprises of nodes, just like Meshtastic does. Um, and for this, we're actually using these. Now these are from a company called Rayax, and they're very, very simple. So these little boards, which are tiny, by the way, you can see one of these tiny little coin cells next to it. Um, they have an MCU and a lower transceiver built in. You can see there's the IPEX. Um, antenna connector there as well which you can use to connect your normal sort of antenna system up to that but the really cool thing about these devices is that they're super easy to interface to you can literally connect them to a raspberry pi i'll show you that in a minute you can connect them to a t-deck if you want and also other devices that you can just make yourself so you can see here on the raspberry pi i've made a very quick simple script that allows you to send messages as a starting point so if we just hit s here to send a message, we can type in the message. So we can say hello, like that, hit that, and it says the message sent. So this is a very simple interface, it's not fancy or anything, but you can basically go over to a T deck here and then get your messages like this, hit the G key, and you see the last message there, message from node ID one, the RSSI is minus 36, signal to noise um, 11, and then you can see our message there, hello. And if we go to this other device here, which is basically a Raspberry Pi Zero in a box with a, um, a sharp LCD screen, very, very low power consumption. And you can see here that message has arrived there as well. So the way these send messages is via AT commands, which is very, very, they're very, very easy to send over a serial port. You basically got to make 
four connections to the board to whatever you want to use. Um, those that are into FPV and stuff like the drone side of things will know um, about how to interface with little receivers to, to drone controllers. It's exactly the same way. Um, in here, we've actually got one connected to the to the UART. Um, I'll come more onto this maybe in a later video because it's a bit more bit more involved, but it is still pretty simple to set one of these things up. And this is actually running MicroPython um, on this on the T deck, which is incredibly cool. There's loads of stuff it does actually. It's even got a built in like drum machine. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. Anyway, but the awesome thing about this is if you are familiar with Python, which I know quite a few of you are, this is a MicroPython REPL. So this is a REPL running on the T deck, and there's even an ed editor. So you can actually, if should you want to, <laughs> you can actually modify your code. So this is the code for the messaging system. Um, basically, just that script running on there. So you can modify that on the fly. How cool is that? I've also made a script for a repeater. So this is a Raspberry Pi Pico connected to the uh, the lower transceiver board there. And basically this is running right now. You can see the little LED um, heartbeat there. But what this effectively does is it just repeats a message from one side to the other. So I'll show you in practice. If we, for example, send a message here. So basically enter your message. And if we give the flag RPT, basically what that will do is that will signal this repeater to repeat whatever message comes after the RPT. So we can literally go, you know, hello, um, just send hello, that'll do. Hit that, and that's actually sent it. Now you can actually see this. I, I probably missed that. It flashed twice there um, to show that the message has actually gone through. So we can go over to our T-Deck here and we can get the messages again. And you can see here that what it's done is it sent my hello. So the ID of my first station which sent it, one via 55, which 55 is the ID of this. And you can set all these IDs in the scripts um, for, for that. So it's easy to do. Um, and then we can have a look on here as well. This gives a better indication of what's actually going on. This sort of shows the raw data coming from the module. So you can see here, you know, the first station sent um, RPT hello, and then the repeaters received that, and then it's resent it out again. So you can see that one via 55 there. So, you know, you could effectively just stick this up a hill somewhere, or we could have, an, have a situation where if you get more of these in an area, you could have repeaters actually kind of serving an area rather than nodes repeating um, in that normal sort of mesh topography, which kind of doesn't work so you know this is what laura was actually designed for very very low overhead systems like this to send in small amounts of data you'll notice there's no axe at the moment in this i have actually got an ack kind of part of the script that's turned off at the moment mainly to reduce bandwidth and if you were to set up a simple system like i said just have these little repeaters in higher places then they would just literally serve the area we know that this works incredibly well from what we've learned with Meshtastic, where it all goes wrong is the mesh side because there's not really enough bandwidth and when things get really congested, the whole thing just kind of falls apart. Really, Meshtastic would work a lot better on a higher bandwidth system like Bluetooth LE. Anyway, I'm not proposing this replaces Meshtastic because obviously it doesn't. There's no like fancy app or you know the software and the kind of amount of development that's gone into Meshtastic um, on the more GUI side of it. Um, yeah, this is never gonna never gonna compete with that, of course. But this could be a nice little hobby project to get involved in. And what I'm proposing is doing this on a separate frequency. Now, the good thing about this system is these little modules by default are actually using a lower bandwidth than Meshtastic devices. It depends what you know mode you've got your uh, Meshtastic node in. But normally it's like 250 kilohertz uh, for the for the bandwidth, which there's only one frequency we can really use in the UK for that. But these use 125 kilohertz, so we can actually use some of the other frequencies out there. You still have to abide by the 10% um, duty cycle rule, but you're not going to hit that with this sort of system if you're just you know, tinkering about with sending a few messages. So if we look at this document here, this is basically showing you the frequency allocations for license exempt devices, which is what we're doing here. Um, and if we go down to uh, page 16, I've already found this sort of bunch of frequencies here. So this bunch of frequencies looks interesting because you are allowed to run 500 milliwatts EIRP 
Um, and so these are quite close to 868 and 869, so the antennas shouldn't be a problem. They should be wide enough to handle that. We can always, you know, trim your antennas or make adjustments to that as necessary anyway. Um, they have got things saying about adaptive power control um, mitigation techniques, but I think as we're doing this manually, we should we should actually be fine because we can you know we, we we can choose not to cause interference or you know that that sort of thing so um i know there's a lot of um other stuff out there like car charging systems that are causing havoc on 868 um and blatantly ignoring all of this these regulations anyway so well allegedly anyway from what people have reported um maximum bandwidth we've got um, 200 kilohertz which is fine we're operating in 125 kilohertz mode anyway and we've got this bit here as well which is basically saying the same thing mitigating interference um, and we've got duty cycle you know below 10 percent, which is the same as the the other frequency anyway so i think this could be a goer you know to do these experiments in this range here and what i would say is probably the mid middle of that band there 867.5 um, an 867.5 is the center frequency, so we won't be going above 867.6 anyway. So it looks like this could be a goer. I'm going to start a new Discord channel um, on my Discord, and I'll leave the link below to that. Um, these little boards are costing about 26 quid, I think, on, on Amazon I've found them. Um, we've got the Empowered Shop as well, so maybe we'll we'll get some of these in um, if, there's show, if there seems to be sort of a demand for them because we can get these probably, you know, and probably make them a lot cheaper than that. I think they're those are being imported from, from the States. The other thing that would be nice is if we could get the Helltech boards to support this firmware as well. I don't see that there's any reason why not. It's probably above my pay grade when it comes to coding. I just do a little bit of casual Python here and there. So yeah, doing the, the sort of hardcore ESP32 stuff is probably a bit beyond me. But the fact that we can get um, MicroPython running on this, I'll leave a link to this firmware as well. It's a really interesting firmware. Um, it's called Tulip Creative Computer. It was originally designed for music stuff and kind of creating stuff, but it's actually wicked because you've got a full Python environment to kind of tinker with on that side of it. Also, with our connections with the store, X-Ray Mark, shout to you, mate. I know he's been working hard on the rack relationship as well. Um, those products are shipping now. Um, I believe we've got them in, in stock in the UK. Um, but yeah, basically... Uh, with the with that relationship there, I'm pretty sure we should be able to get something going with Rack to support um, this side of things as well. It's basically an AT command set. Um, if we can get an AT command set um, embedded running on uh, these devices like the Helltex, then they will just literally respond to AT commands coming in from um, the UART. So this could be absolutely brilliant. I'm really excited to see what you guys think of this. Um, and yeah, just just have some fun and experiments. That's that's what it's all about. So I'll upload these Python scripts to my GitHub and um, so you can download those freely and modify, do what you want. That's the idea of this. It's gonna be a completely kind of unfolding story. That's what I wanna try and get with this. Just, you know, people just adding bits and pieces and features to it. It'd be really cool to see. Um, and Python's a really easy way to do this. And if you're not into Python, get into it it's not actually that difficult and you can use chat gpt now to to come up with a lot of the code <laughs> that's what i did so i hope you enjoyed this one guys hope it doesn't mind bogging you too much and we'll catch you next time